but I hardly ever use Markdown anymore. Like I, I, I didn't even when I when I first started, I it was Markdown, right? Like it is for everyone okay? because it's so simple. And but I found because again, once I first started moving my manuscripts to uh, plain text, especially with this uh, novel that I'm working on right now, I could not in any way or form mimic the typographic architecture that I was talking about. How do I shift? different fonts in markdown you can't right especially when you're when you're rendering it into a pdf the markdown into a pdf it's just one font that will be used in various various weightings or weightages depending on if it's bold styling or italicized or underline or whatnot but that that's about it it doesn't go beyond that uh latex does now uh, but is there for me the happy middle ground between the very simple uh, markdown and the very complex LaTeX is org mode. I feel like org mode is 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 everything that I require for a simple markup language. And honestly, org mode is very simple as a markup language. It's incredibly straightforward, really simple. But the advantage of org mode is in the org mode ecosystem, which is just insane. I'm into markdown a lot. Everyone's telling yeah. me to switch to I, work. I, yeah, but <laughs> Markdown is my thing. And, uh, but I do see that it's, we could say inferior, you know, uh, if I compare it to org, are there any compatibility issues or caveats with org? Because Josh told me, Josh, Joshua Blaze, mm. he told me that if you want yeah. to create a readme in GitHub, you can do it in the dot org extension in yeah 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 you can yeah you can um uh, because i think github uh now renders org files uh natively i think uh, mm -hmm. along with markdown and honestly for most of the emacs uh, repositories all the readme's are in org uh then they're hardly ever in markdown at least, uh, not that I've seen. Um, and personally, I, I, I've, like I said, I, I, I've moved on from Markdown, uh, and I haven't had a need to go back to it um, because, like I said, I, I, I feel like the the happy middle ground between LaTeX insane power and Markdown's simplicity is Augmode because Augmode can be simple if it needs to be, or it can be incredibly complex if it needs to be as well and Augboard also comes with LaTeX uh, integrations right you can uh, you can put in for example if i was writing uh, notes for a technical subject and i wanted to include a formula and you know again Augboard doesn't support it natively but it does support for LaTeX or uh, it does support LaTeX so you can use a lot you can use LaTeX to create the formula and then export it into org mode itself. So it, it has the best of both worlds. I don't know if Markdown can go into that uh, level of complexity. Mm, okay. The only compatibility I, with the- I am not, I am not, I'm not trying to like take you away from Markdown, right? <laughs> I'm thinking like, about fight it. The, <laughs> fight, fight for Markdown, man, fight for Markdown. It's, it's a great format in itself. No, but you're saying completely the opposite with all your actions <laughs> uh, okay yeah. but i'm being truthful though I, I because like i was trying to think when i last time i used markdown and i just cannot like i can perhaps uh let's see uh... i guess the only compatibility issue would be with other people right so if you want to share a file with someone else and they get mm -hmm. an org file they're like What's this? I want a markdown file, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But then again, all, uh, if you were on, I'm not saying you should be, but if you were doing org on Emacs and you say control C, control E, one of the export uh, options is markdown as well. So I'm just saying. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I've, I have a feeling here that I'm someone who spoke at a BIM conference three times, right? And now I'm just like being so evangelical about Emacs. I'm sure to get a lot of like hate mail, I think, after after this. So next year is going to be Emacs Conf. 
not neo vim conf uh let's see let's see <laughs> okay let us see and um have you used this other tool for note taking obsidian do you have any thoughts on it i mean i did but and obsidian's killer feature was the network node graph uh Emacs does that for me, as you uh, as you can see. Uh, so I, I really didn't need uh, to go back to Obsidian. Uh, like until recently, I wanted everything to be inside NeoVim. Now I want everything to be inside Emacs, and e and in some cases, uh, like even without me thinking about it, someone has actually like created all the things that I would put put possibly need on Emacs. Uh, whereas when I first came into uh, Vim. I had to kind of flail around to find Create. solutions that were yep. specific. Yeah, specific for writers, right? Whereas with Emacs, there's so much just uh, already uh, in the ecosystem for writers and writing. So I just had to kind of bring it together. And I like the amount of time I spent configuring Emacs is, I would say, like if I was to, uh, like, I would say I would have spent at least Close to 200 to 300 hours on configuring uh, NeoVim over the over the years, right? Whereas I don't think I've spent more than a day uh, on Emacs. at most on Emacs because because everything there. everything was all everything was already there. I just had to like I had to just look for uh, some uh, you know certain functionality and I, either it wouldn't be there or it was available as some sort of package, right? Uh, that's it. So whereas uh, with uh, NeoVim, I had, I mean, and with Vim, I had to look around. I also had to see if there was some sort of way because Emacs has plenty of people or writers who have already spoken about its powers for years, right? For years and years and years, right? Like everyone from uh, the science fiction author, um, Oh my gosh, I knew I was going to forget his name right, I'll give you a second. The science fiction writer Neil Stevenson, right? Uh, 